In conclusion, teleophthalmology is here to stay. COVID uh, health crisis is accelerating the development of teleophthalmology. New models of care are being created, incorporating it in telemedicine, and the potential for new devices for home monitoring. As you know, there's a lot of sensors that are being developed in, uh, attached to intraocular lenses and others. So the future would be similar to the uh, iWatch or uh, Apple Watch uh, to be able to get a lot of data about the eye uh, from home. I do believe uh, to solve medicine, like we need a very close collaboration between academia, like hospitals, uh, physicians, um, and uh, the technologists, right? So basically, I, I, I would say it's not very easy. And, and you, you know, we all know the, the uh, medical school, how things run in medical school, how things run at NIH, how things run at uh, industry, right? So, so I, I feel, there, um, the, there are some misconnections from my observation. Um, so I'm within my ability, I'm trying to fix that, right? So I do read the, I, I feel this uh, on the right, this uh, book is very good about talking about, you know, how was intuitive medicine was well uh, going to uh, build as empirical medicine, eventually going to precision medicine, right? So there's three principles to make a health innovation work. It means like if we develop technologies together with physician, with the workflow, how would we make a positive impact in the clinical workflow? The doctor hypothesis, I think, you know, you, you, you use the basic level at least then uh, you can probably predict the receptor status as accurate as human observers uh, using the more expensive uh, not widely available stands. So, so basically, you know, they use a machine, they use AI, reading those images, those things, reading those cells, and predict uh, if the patient had the receptor or not. So, so, so this uh, you can consider all these four works. They are superhuman. So they are not. They are actually better or significantly better than human readers using the same, using the same modality, using the same medical imaging. You know, I, I'm still mostly medical imaging is just different kind of medical imaging, right? Um, but I, I think there's nothing really to be worried about. It's just like, a, you know, we can use CT to see patients inside, right? We could not see it by our own eye, right? It's just, it's just a powerful tool for physician to use. You know, it's nothing going to be like a super AI to replace humans. It's really like about uh, in the future, it's about, uh, you know, how human AI uh, combined uh, clinical workflow, as, as especially in oncology, in the whole area of oncology, I believe that's uh, that will be really helpful. That's really move from intuitive medicine to empirical medicine, eventually to precision medicine. So eventually, a lot of patients will will be benefited from, uh, and that will make a doctor's life easier. Um, so you know, we do want to develop technology which is not only good but also can be frequent and conventionally used, right? So, so we want to push this technology to be everywhere, not just you. You, you can only do this as MS, KCC, or Johns Hopkins. We want to make this possible to treat patient elsewhere, maybe if not everywhere, right? So we believe technology that has great accessibility. I think that's very important. So we want to try to balance the accessibility and the precision uh, in the future protocols, in the future treatment protocols, in a sense, treatment or diagnostic protocols. You know, I work at NIH for five years, so th that's mainly what we do in the hospital, right? Uh, so I get a spirit from there. I think the medicine can definitely be improved a lot.